Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the Toyota Amina Estima. I know the name is kind of weird, but you know what? This is an absolute crazy car. We'll come to that in a bit. This car comes courtesy of Tahir's uncle to me. Thank you so much for lending me your amazing van. And let's straight open the engine bay. That is the engine. Kind of seems chintu mintu. I think maybe the engine is somewhere else. <laughs> the engine is right there, dum dum. Yeah. below the front seats now you can see the design actually looks quite nice oh uh, these lights are not working right now this is i think for the high beam of course and nothing is obviously led nice chintu toyota logo and there is where the indicator is it's down here as well which i initially thought must be the fog light it has a cab forward i was saying cab forward it's a cab forward design of course and the wheels are 15 inches sort of a chrome treatment the size of the tires 225 60 15s they look really nice actually and you get a manually adjustable antenna you have to actually pull it out like that there's a rain visor here of course mirrors are internally adjustable as well and it says four wheel drive right there living saloon ex this is actually the limited x variant and yeah it kind of looks weird from the side but it's big enough and small wheels don't really lend it that character or road presence because chintu wheels na they look little weird it looks like a bigger version of the kidnap van the omni but there is no door here which is kind of surprising which means to get in you have to do it from the other side because toyota firmly believes that kidnapping should not happen from the right side it's just not safe and it's so tall now for me to actually see on the top i have to climb meanwhile coming to the rear it says toyota here with a sticker toyota logo amina estima four wheel drive x limited x so lot of stickering here and there fasil khan fingers of truth are really scared of this real exhaust which actually pops out it pops out so much it juts out from the bumper you can see the underbody because there is where the spare wheel is which has never been used so it's kind of rusted it's a full size tire with an alloy of course and you can see the underbody meanwhile no rear camera no rear parking sensors none of that bullshit it says toyota here spray comes out from there a rear spoiler with a high mounted stop lamp you get a rear wiper of course and this is a mirror which is kind of useful to help you judge i don't know i have i don't know how to use it to be honest let's open the boot which is actually quite big yeah it's a very nice and big boot So I've reclined the seat all the way back, which is a stupid thing to do. So we're just going to put it ahead, so you can see how much space is on offer. Yeah, that is a lot of space, and because it has a DVD player, there is where the CDs or DVDs actually go. That's kind of nice, and I think that is for the audio mechanism. You need these sun blinds. The car is going to heat a lot, and I don't even know what this is. But trust me, this car puts the Kia Carnival to shame. Let's shut this. Oh, what? There is a light placement here. Okay, uh, how do we turn it on? Yeah, that is kind of cool. Every time I get inside this car, I kind of dis—I uh, mean, uh, what was the word I was saying? Discover something new. Just lost for words today. Okay, this is where the fuel goes. Living Saloon EX. It's actually a place where you live in. Okay, now the interesting bit is that this car has got 360 degree rotating seats, known as swivel seats, and there you can see it. I've made a complete mess of it. So. the seats can be front facing they can be side facing they can be rear facing so if you want to have a conversation with your guest you can just rotate them i'll show you how it's done in a bit so first and foremost uh, okay how do we okay there is a lever somewhere or the other and i need to really struggle here to figure out how to move things but yeah thankfully this moves very easily and then i just push it ahead and i get inside there's a cup holder here you can see the rear seats are awesome but you know what they don't fold flat so if you want to carry more luggage no 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 this is more people oriented less materialistic car anyways window area is huge and this door does not open but there is a handle to hold on to here meanwhile uh, okay seat belts there is this cup holder here speaker placement right there and then you know this is the most upright position if i want to put it behind i can go all the way down like that yeah completely flat this one also goes completely flat so you can make a proper bed you have to remove the headrest at the front of course extremely comfortable but the problem is now for someone as tall as me under thigh support is non existent look at that under thigh support what is the under thigh support none and legroom can be bet better i just push this ahead and then you can see legroom and neroom can get better window area is large enough i love this light okay look at the color of the light that's kind of weird it's a kind of different blue light huh anyways this seat moves around look at the way it moves you can completely swivel it around yeah that is so amazing So if I want the person to face me, I can just swivel it like that, or I just want to put it back into place. I need to swivel it like that. Now, in order to put it back into place, I need to first swivel this one. So, yo, baby, come on now, back into place. How cool is that? 
okay decent amount of space but not as much as for me however toyota firmly believes that children can also smoke that's the reason there's an ashtray here yeah because the third row is best for children only honestly now let's just remove this headrest headrest rather remove the headrest and i'm just going to get out from here oh my god i slotted this back into place which means i just press this button and there move it ahead but it doesn't stick around it kind of keeps coming behind somehow i will manage to get outside ah oh, that was difficult anyways let's put this all the way behind and yeah it kind of makes a bed for this i'll have to move this ahead mm, oh. today i have taken so much effort not trust me on this but this thing okay let me just put the camera down and fix this for a moment it's going to take me a minute or so but you guys can hold on please cooperate with me yeah that is the bed i was talking about how cool is that in fact it can become cooler still if i push this all the way behind and there now you tell me this isn't crazy this is of course so crazy aram se ek bistar bana diya and i can do the same with that one as well so let's do one thing let's get inside and see how much space is on offer first and foremost oh my goodness oh what a comfortable car i can easily rest like well, this is a better bed than the one at home of course and there is decent amount of legroom and room but then i chose to come to this side and then i have a lot more knee room and leg room yeah this kind of nice knee room and leg room but then at that time toyota believe under thigh support is something which they should not offer under thigh support is poor here also which is kind of surprising and middle row passengers will obviously smoke if the children do it so there's an ashtray here these windows don't open there's a handle to hold on to ac vents are here on the top it's kind of nice and ac controls seem very similar to the one which you see on the innova in actually the ac is very effective Now, if I want to open this, okay, I can just open it like this, or I can decide that I'm going to press this button and open it because this one actually opens, yeah, and it is a big roof, so it brings in a lot of airiness inside the cabin. Yeah, that's big. In order to close it, I have to keep both the buttons pressed initially, and then I can leave the one on the right, kind of a lock mechanism, and then we're going to shut it straight away. Oh my God, what a car! Only thing if under thigh support was better, now this would be so freaking amazing. Let's just shut this. Ah. It doesn't take much effort either. Okay, you have a handle here, so you can hold and get in and out. Seat belt get the height adjust function as well. That's kind of cool, and that is the dashboard design, which is like a continuous treatment from the dashboard to the door pads. Again, looks fantastic. Just so freaking amazing. Quality levels are maintained in spite of the age. That's why a Toyota is a Toyota is a Toyota. There is nothing which is worn out in this car in spite of the age, which is amazing. Like I was showing you, lot of vents here. Now there's a DVD player as well. Right in the center, they have put a DVD player so that rear passengers can enjoy a movie or two. Now let's get out from here. So it's easy. There's no effort as such. So while the carnival has this electric and all for the door, this one is so lightly done. I mean, not lightly done, like so light to operate. Uh, they took it seriously. That it's very easy to actually open and close it. And then cross cutting was done here. Anyways, no keyless entry, none of that. Now you see the door pockets are not big enough. These are the controls for the outside rear view mirror adjustment. This is to lock and unlock the doors, of course. And these are the power window controls. One touch up and down for the driver side. Here you go. You can see that. And it has window moonroof lock, which means that the rear sunroof can be locked from here. Which means that children who are smoking, they cannot actually open the roof. This is going to put back into place. Okay, only two windows in this car as such, which move. And yeah, that's about it. Hard plastics are in plenty. I like like this upholstery, which is similar to the one which you see on the crown as well in the Japanese market. The handbrake placement is done here, which is kind of weird. And there is no dead pedal there, although there is a lot of space on the left side. And this is to open the hood of the vehicle. And there is a small storage compartment here as well. And I don't know what I think this is for the AC vents. So in order to defog, you want to defog the side windows also because yeah, that's what needs to be done. This is a button for the fog light, and this is a button for God knows what. When I turn it on, I don't even know what it is. So I just try to figure that out later. Anyways, let's get inside. Firstly, seats are very comfortable. There's an armrest only for the driver, not for the co-driver. And then to adjust the seat, you actually do it from this side. Yeah, that's right. You adjust the seat from this side, so everything is swapped right, left, and center here. Okay, and I think maybe the engine lies somewhere here. We're sitting on it. There is some storage space here. There's no wireless charging pad like you might believe there must be. And let me just shut the wipers for a moment. Okay, some amount of vibrations can be felt. I love the way the treatment has been done. You can actually keep stuff here, which is going to fly as soon as you drive. And the glove box is decent size, and there's this provision to keep your cups as well. So cup holder is there. Now this, okay, it's kind of 
broken broken okay this is an aftermarket unit so we're not going to talk about it 12 volt charging socket two usb charging sockets as well and there's so much storage in the center usually indians would see another person a child here <laughs> but you should not do that there's no seat but ac controls with instructions written in japanese air conditioning controls here we're just going to shut off the air conditioning for a moment this is the hazard light button this is for the front defogger of course and the instrument cluster is so far ahead it's absolutely crazy okay it's all analog it looks really nice and below that you know the gas selector is obviously there there's a fuel meter on the right we have got a temperature meter and there's a speedometer as well as a tachometer and everything is obviously manual no digital stuff the horn is actually quite nice steering is big how do you adjust it there's a lever here can you see this there's a lever here and then you just push this lever upwards and there it operates so we're just going to do that yeah you just yeah now it's not going to move now you need to just okay slot back into place and push it wow that is so freaking cool there's a dummy button right there as well so steering is just height adjustable as such now the interesting bit is this is the control for the wipers we'll use the wipers right away but you know what you have to operate the spray separately that's kind of weird so how do you operate that spray i'm trying to figure that out okay press this button yeah there the spray comes out it's so slow the wipers also have taken a vacation they take their own sweet time to move there's a handle here Okay, there is no mirror, but there's a toll receipt holder. There is a mirror which is magnetic. No auto dimming mirror, but there's a clock right there, and this is obviously for the light. Now let's just open this. Now this one opens tilt. It does not open properly. It just tilts. So you just push it like this, and there it brings some air inside. And then to put it back into place, you have to really pull it and then shut it as well. And then we are just going to keep it open at the moment because it's bringing some nice light. I think airbags are there in this car. It says SRS airbag. In fact, I think it has a few airbags, side airbags as well. Obviously, it has to be high on safety. It's a Toyota. a car at the end of the day but the glass area is huge it's like crazy huge so there are some dummy buttons here probably this car was made for the left hand drive market and there are no door pockets at the rear of course let's do one thing let's get outside first and foremost now these are the controls for the headlights why am i getting outside because i want to show you it says airbag somewhere here i had seen some airbag written somewhere right there maybe it was at the rear i'm getting a little confused but yes it has got side airbags as well so what an amazing car like super duper awesome the build and does this also open one hour later i failed to find side airbags written anywhere which means there's only one way to find out but will i do that no 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 very risky <laughs> says srs airbag here for the front one of course and there's this flare which you can actually blow so that people know you're stuck and they'll come to rescue you although in india i don't think anyone is going to come and there you can see lot of exposed wiring as well kind of weird anyways let's do one thing let's get to the rear because there's some more interesting bits which i need to talk about first and foremost this seat actually moves ahead and behind of course it does so i'm just going to push it all the way behind and then i can with one hand also pull it ahead so yeah very smooth mechanism in spite of the age it's not actually gone rust or scrubby there you can see the mirror where is it useful just to see exactly what is below when you're parking so from the front mirror you can see downwards ki kuch hai to nahi or you're not touching the car behind that's interesting you get a rear wiper wa washer defogger and all that stuff as well now here there is some storage space so door pockets are not useless but this is not a door so i said it right earlier as well and then obviously you can recline the seat completely so it can become a complete double bed of course and you've got magazine holders here now let me shut this door okay and little bit of an effort you notice you can lock the door from here yeah that's right you can just lock the door if you so wish and this actually opens to bring in some amount of air but it opens so small now i don't know what kind of air it's going to get and of course you can also child lock this door which makes sense when children can smoke they should be child locked anyways let's start driving right away all right i'm just going to turn on the car quite a stretch to the gear lever is it turned on or not what oh no don't tell me this battery is also gone now we are all set to go which means getting into drive mode straight away you know what there's a cup holder here which i missed out on every time i sit in the car i discover something new okay handbrake i am going to put the handbrake down which is on the right side kind of like the first tempo traveler anyways the size of this car is relatively big but honestly this is the smaller version of the toyota estima the amina was the smaller version they had a lucida as well so they actually made those smaller versions for one major reason which was that by having oh my god what a speed breaker by having these smaller versions they had to pay less tax because uh, like in japan based on the size and the dimension the taxation changes so they actually came up with these versions as well and this is actually known as the previa because it previews in spanish it means to preview it previews all the technologies which should be there in future mpvs so that's what toyota believed in and uh, in the us it was sold as the previa the estima is the name which was used in the let me think yeah in the japanese market of course now i'm going to take a quick u turn okay 
and uh, yeah it is <laughs> quite the dimension here let's get into reverse i'm actually doing all this because i really love operating this gear lever here we are into reverse i think it's a four speed automatic gearbox it's a torque converter i'm not sure it's four or five but we'll try and figure that out in a bit and into two, okay forget two one i have why am i going one extra so first and foremost it's very ponderous to drive and obviously i'm sitting on the engine right now because it is a front mid engine so what was there in the hood well i'll tell you what in the hood there was the ac compressor there was the power steering pump as well as the alternator and all that stuff has been put there so it's just easier to operate including the battery of course because we have to jump start the car right so all this is put right ahead which is fine easy to service so how does it power it the front of the engine actually powers it so it's known as a supplementary some something drive system or something of that sort okay <laughs> yeah that technical thing does not matter but the speed breaker is humongous ground clearance is not an issue you know what this car even has a rear disc yeah it has got rear disc brakes 9096 model i think 96 they got a facelift 94 they had a slight update onto the throttle it doesn't really respond it makes a lot of sound because this is a diesel engine at the end of the day a 2.2 liter diesel engine produces around 100 horsepower and 215 newton meters of torque it's going to come to a halt steering is actually big but it's not very heavy left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator revving the motor rev still 2000 rpm off we go Red lines are around four and a half thousand RPM, and then it pauses there. Thinks, should I make a shift, and then does it? Okay, by the way, it's known as the supplementary accessory drive system, the one I was talking about. How the engine is able to power all those mechanisms in the hood, of course. Yeah, the engine offers decent performance. It's not very sprightly as such, and this car actually failed miserably in the US market for multiple reasons. First and foremost, obviously, Toyota was charging a premium, but the bigger issue is that Americans obviously want displacement, which they could not offer with this car because. Mid, mid engine the rather front mid engine right i'm sitting on the engine of course there's not much space to actually give a bigger engine and the compet oh my god there's a speed breaker the competitors were offering v6 and all that more powerful engine and that's where toyota lagged now there have been a lot of generations of this model over the years and uh, this car actually sits under the welfare and the alphard the welfare is, in, uh, the, is sold in india of course so that is the kind of positioning for this vehicle in terms of toyota's portfolio and then uh, i love the way the horn placement on, on this car a little bit of rattles coming from a toyota car is something which you would never ever expect but then that's something toyota manages to give you either which ways and the steering is actually light okay it's obviously power assisted but it doesn't feel heavy as such it's not super duper light it has some feel and feedback to it which makes it very reassuring to drive now the earlier model was obviously either a rear wheel drive or a four wheel drive this is of course four wheel drive you get rear wheel drive as well if you're going to spend lesser money and it's a front mid engine later they realized we need to go front engine so they went front engine and they went front wheel drive as well because obviously uh, you know more efficient efficiency is crucial this car is not very efficient it should return some better around seven to nine kilometers per liter on diesel power which is kind of fine I, I like the commanding driving position handling is fine it's not that great as such there is a lot of body roll but because you know with this whole system of putting all that stuff ahead like the compressor the ac pump and uh, obviously the alternator and the battery they try to get a nice weight distribution for better handling and that's kind of work because it's not as ponderous to drive as this toyota innova although the old one was much better to drive than the newer one Oh my god we are in toyota lane right now you know i know how many people buy toyotas like i thought delhi has a lot of toyota madness but trust me that honda uh, the honda toyota madness is here as well okay let me let them cross first you know, this is confusing lane at the moment there's a honda there's an, another another innova and the uh, handbrake is i think similar to this force which is a tufan or something of that sort yeah i got it right that's kind of crazy any which ways so Throttle response is not that good. You get on the throttle, there's this lag. It doesn't really respond immediately, and this gearbox is a little lackluster. It's a torque converter unit, of course, but it doesn't respond with the same sense of urgency which you would expect. That said, a steering is so huge now. You're just like driving, always moving the steering. Now the weight of this car is 1700 kgs because obviously it's huge in terms of size. You can't feel that weight as such, but you know now this car is quite long, so you have to be always alert that like this is the left. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna take a left. You have to be always alert that there's a lot of body falling behind you, and I don't know this car loves speed breakers. Wherever I go, there's always a speed breaker, and then again Innovas and Innovas, so many of them. Toyota should actually consider launching this car. because if they do now probably it will sell better than the carnival for sure huge space huge practicality engine becomes very vocal when you push it really hard but the tachometer now is rotating all the way you need to sort it the taco needle drops all the way to 1000 rpm so i think it kind of declutches for better fuel efficiency something of that sort for sure here yeah, you are not going to try a quick overtake not can you manually control gears not really but you have this tool to restrict the drive to second gear or l mode for uh, giving that additional oomph when you're try uh, like climbing hills or something of that sort that will probably keep it in first gear itself so all these things are also there in this car but honestly it's the road presence the comfort levels and the practicality which really stand out in this car it's not meant to be driven hard or fast but still we're going to get hard on the throttle 
every time I get onto the throttle, na, trust me, it just goes crazy, revving all the way to 4.5 thousand RPM, and the gearbox is really lethargic. It's gone for a vacation, or maybe the gearbox is old now because this is a 1996 model. So it's like what? Let me calculate quickly. 24, 26 years old. That's kind of on the older side. Now, if I take this corner aggressively, there's a very high chance we will be facing the other way. But that's not the point. Not the other way. Upside down. That is. Here we go. Come on. That response could be better. Engine is crazy vocal. It's like really crazy vocal. In fact, I estimate that this car will go from zero to hundred kilometers per hour in around twenty seconds, which makes it kind of slow. But that doesn't matter. What matters is that everyone looks at it. It's such a rare and obviously an epic car in the real sense. Very retro machine. A nice people's carrier as well. Hazard light on. Hazard light off. Revving the motor and off we go. So the thing is, I'm going to leave the throttle in between. Because the noise gets too much, so basically power is being channeled to all the wheels. So grip levels are very nice, and we'll rear wheel drive. Of course, you're not going to spin because there's no power as such. They have petrol engine as well, but this 2.2 liter diesel engine well gets the job done with 100 PS. Problem is 700 kgs of weight you have to lug around, which is 100 PS. That's not adequate enough, and 250 newton meters of torque is a bit underwhelming. Even by diesel standards, you would expect more. And yeah, just avoid the bumps because kind of. Crashes through it. I think the low-speed ride is really very nice. High-speed stability could be a little better, although it really doesn't like to do high speeds. Top speed would be what 120 kilometers per hour tops. But yeah, you can see it gets a little vertical movementy, largely because the suspension is on the softer side. So guys, this is my vlog of this fantastic Toyota Estima, uh, Enima. Uh, limited X, some, something, something. They've put so many names to this car, so many acronyms or adjectives for reasons best known to them. Maybe you know they get tax benefits. The longer the name, the more the tax benefits, or something of that sort. And on that discovery, it's time to end. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye. I've literally driven this car between zero to sixty kilometers per hour because over that it kind of feels uncomfortable. Even if I take it on the highway and open the taps now, it's going to be a little uncomfy. Yes. Okay, I was thinking of taking a right right now, but anyways, I I like how everything is seen so beautifully well here. And this is the left. Yeah. All right, here we go. Yeah, the front kind of washes out, but that's kind of expected. Bye bye.